Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and we are going to make some fun projects today. So I've shown you guys how I do my more traditional snippet tape, or what I consider that, um, where you just take a bunch of scraps and little pieces and use maybe washi tape or a strip of paper but I also like making these strips that are where you make a collage master board and then you decorate them and of course depending on the scraps you use um, they can look completely different so these are like one-of-a-kind unique pieces of ephemera right and so um, I think sometimes when people are doing the collage master boarding they get hung up on trying to make sure everything's gonna coordinate and look beautiful and I'm here to encourage you not to do that to just enjoy putting the papers down because no matter how you do that they, they really do end up looking beautiful um, and then you can add little extra pieces um, if you want to, um, to kind of pull each piece together, okay? So the other thing we're gonna do, so I'm gonna show you how to make these, um, and then we're also gonna make a collage master board that I'm gonna use for a junk journal cover. So um, you kind of get multiple ideas, hopefully, with this video, and you guys will enjoy it. So, um, I have an Etsy shop, and you guys know that, so I have a lot of pieces of copy weight paper that end up just as off cuts because I don't buy the sticky labels for my packages. I print them on a piece of paper, and then by the time you cut off the part that has, you know, the barcode and the person's name and address and all that, you have this piece of paper over here. Haven't figured out how to do that better, but th that's what I do. So I have a lot of these, and I don't throw them away. I use them, and one of the things I use them for is definitely to collage and, and make little master boards on. Um, but you can use any paper you want. You could even use like pages from a magazine. I mean, get get creative. Whatever you have on hand, you can use book page. We're for the um, whoo, for the junk journal cover we're going to make. We're actually going to use this envelope here, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that in the next part of the video. But use use junk mail. Use um paper that you've written notes on or your grocery list and you're not going to use anymore. Some people will even collage like on receipts that you get from the store. You know, if you get a receipt that is approximately this size, you know how that happens um, from the grocery store or something, you could collage on that. That would be great. So whatever you have, um, feel free. The other thing I'm going to do today is I'm just using scraps that are kind of on my desk or in my scrap bin. Um, and you can start off with larger pieces. You can start off with smaller pieces. It, it really doesn't matter. So I'm also going to use my favorite glue stick. It's the YooHoo glue stick. Um, I buy these kind of in bulk. Um, kind of. It's a large package that I get on Amazon. And y'all, I'm just using this piece of um, cardstock. It had gotten some ink or something on it, and so I decided to use it as a as a glue page so I don't get glue, hopefully, all over my mat. I tend to do that anyway. But anyway, the Yoohoo Glue Sticks, if you're interested in the pack that I buy, it is in my Amazon storefront. The link is in the description if you want to look at that. Um, and if you do click and, and purchase something, I do get a small, a few pennies um, for purchases. So that's my dis disclaimer. But it's more so you guys can see what I use. All right, so the first thing I did was I just picked a piece of book page and just plopped it down. And then I'm going to start collaging um, on the paper. Now, like I said, I encourage you to try not to overthink this. Just whatever your hand picks up. Um, let's challenge ourselves. We're just going to stick it down, right? Um, because you're going to end up cutting these into strips and it, it's all going to come together just fine. So, um, you, you use what you have on hand. This was a prototype when I was making, I think it was an accordion style flippy something anyway but I ended up not using this one so we'll glue some little torn pieces from that I try not to throw any of my papers away 
but sometimes it's hard <laughs> to use them all. I, I get overrun by scraps. So then I sit down and make a bunch of snippets or I make a bunch of collage masterboards to help me work through my stash. And again, some pieces um, have been around a long time and some are more recent scraps on my desk. But, um, I don't like a ton of the white space. It's okay to have some, but I'm gonna end up covering up quite a bit of that first piece that we put down. Sometimes it's hard to decide which side to use when it's a double-sided piece. Again, trying not to overthink it. And if you have pieces that um, are not straight, here we'll, we'll glue this piece down, or it goes off the edge, I'll show you what I do, again, it, it, to save time, and it may seem like um, obvious, but I have um, watched people really try to piece all kinds of pieces together when you really don't have to do that. I just let it hang over the edge a little bit, see that? And later, when this glue is dry, I'll just come and trim that off. Or when I lay it on my trimmer to cut this piece apart, we'll just trim it off. So, again, if you know you have like a color theme or something you're working on and you want um, it to coordinate, then I encourage you maybe to be a little more intentional. You can even grab a um, scrap of paper and just, even if it's not already an obvious scrap, if it's gonna go with your theme, then go for that. I do some that are like in the blues or the greens or the oranges, you know. This one, I'm not worrying. We are just laying paper down. Not gonna worry at all. And I do like torn edges, but again, if that's not your thing, you can chop the pieces up um, or use your scissors. You could use a ruler to help tear a, a straighter type of edge if you wanted to. Um, and if you end up with little tiny pieces um, that you want to cover up, you know, you really can just come in and lay a little bitty piece too. I do encourage you to try to get glue over the, the whole piece simply because um, when you go to chop it up, if you didn't, there may be little pieces um, that roll up on you. And of course you can always just add, like I've got a little tiny bit there. You know, I could always glue that down if I wanted to. But if you only put glue like if you use a wet white glue and only go around the edge, you, you may lose part of your what you've been working on um, when you chop it up. Okay, so again, this is not difficult crafting, but it certainly can help you use up all of those sheets or all of those scraps that you have. And I obviously have quite a bit of this, um, can't remember what kit that's from, um, laying around just on my desk. So it's getting used today. And I have, sometimes when I'm not feeling very creative, I think I've even told you guys that sometimes then I just will sit and do this type of collaging to kind of get my mojo back. Um, sometimes, um, I kind of like that butterfly. Um, sometimes you just need something, you know, to tear it. Like, like I said, my kids joke that I sit around and tear a paper and glue it back together. But there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> or I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Okay. Now, see, I've got, you, I know you guys not might not be able to see it on the camera, but I have a um, little bitty line there that needs something um, to cover it up. I don't like having any of my backing show. Now again, if you chose to use maybe a piece of a, a page from a magazine or a catalog, it, it may not even be a big deal. 
You know, you might just want to um, leave some of it peeking through. That might be fun. Let me know if you decide to try that. All right, I'm going to go this way with this one. And I've got one little, one little spot right here that I'm going to put something on. Um, maybe this flower. Okay, it's that easy. Now, a lot of times what I will do if I'm making a bunch of these, and depending on my backing paper and the thickness of it, I might, I'm going to turn it this way so it covers everything, I might take this, see how it's curling just a little bit, because you kind of want that glue to dry, um, and put a bunch of heavy books on top of it and get it nice and flat. Um, and if I'm doing a bunch of them, I may even use like parchment paper um, in between because the glue, if there's any extra glue sticking on it, it won't, um, they won't stick to each other. So that's just a little tip if you are making a bunch of these or if you just want, you make one and you just want to make sure it dries really nice and flat. So I'm going to set this one aside for a minute and um, we're going to work on this larger envelope piece um, that I'm going to use to make a journal cover out of. And um, then we'll come back to that first one. All right, I'm just gluing this down because I don't want it to go anywhere. And I put a little, I already put a piece over the um, address label. So we're not breaking anyone's confidentiality. Okay, so to make this journal cover, you've got a, a couple options. I'm just using this envelope and let's see what size it is. It's a pretty big one. It is nine inches by 12. It's a nine by 12. So eventually when I fold it in half, which is what I will do, um, we'll have a journal cover that is six by nine. So it's gonna be a nice big one. And by the time I get layers on here, it'll be pretty sturdy, but it's what I would consider a soft-sided journal cover. And I'll probably just have like the one signature, but I kind of want one that has some give, a little bit of give, not this much, um, and make a really a nice big chunky one. My intent with this one is going to be, um, use it for my, uh, articulated paper dolls that I'm making um, um, with Maggie Retro here. In fact, someone had asked me, I had shown the kitty cat <laughs> before, um, and I did both sides. You don't have to. Um, doing both sides, it's a little bit fiddly putting them together, but look at the dachshund. Uh, so if you're watching, someone said, I really wished you had shown us the dachshund or put the dachshund together. Um, they feel like there are too many, too many cats represented. So here we now have a dog and I love dogs. I am a dog person. Um, a couple of my daughters are really into cats and that's their favorite, which is one of the reasons I had shown the cats, but here is this cutie pie and I love his tail. Anyway, so this journal thought it all through yet is going to be a way to house my dolls so that I can then take them out and play with them. So anyway, if you're interested in the paper dolls, there's all kinds. There's some great ones if you're into Halloween and that kind of thing. Oh, and there's a new Alice collection. I can't wait to get my hands on that one. Um, I'll have a link for you. It is my affiliate link. So please click on it. Just click on it. Um, but then if you do make a purchase, I do get a percentage. But if you'll just go take a look, that helps me. And I would love for you to do that. But these are so stinking cute. Okay, so that's what this is about. Is we are going to um, make a journal for my paper dolls. And it's going to be a nice and chunky one. So this we are going to go about in the same fashion. And... Um, get it covered, um, totally collaged. And I may, this is probably going to be the outside force. I can change my mind. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to see how it feels. I may do both sides in collage, or I may just do the outside cover and then, um, cover the inside with some, full pieces of paper, um, or not full, but pieces of paper that, um, will fit. 
on the inside. So let me let me think that that one through. But this is a great way to reuse uh, envelopes, junk mail, things like that that would otherwise just be thrown away. And I'm not quite sure why I'm not using my paper over here to help me <laughs> not get everything all sticky. So I'm going to pull it back out. It's, it's got a little bit of glue on it now, too. Let's see. I don't even remember this paper. I'm going to have to think about it because I like those colors, and that will be pretty for fall. So... Um, on the dolls, I'm really into the ones that um, are a take on vegetables. I don't know why. I guess I was just thinking fall harvest and that would be fun. But um, I want to get the Alice collection um, because I, um, I do several Alice in Wonderland or I have done several Alice in Wonderland journals and... Um, I just think I'll have fun with those. So and I think they're adding more to that particular collection. So I'm going to have to go take a look. You guys could go look and let me know. Let me know what you think. Okay. So it is, um, while I'm crafting, it's a Monday. And it's September of 2024. And um, I... I haven't talked about this much lately, but um, those of you that have been with me for a while, thank you. Thank you for coming back if you have. And if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, but earlier this year, um, I left my kind of big, my big time job. I feel like I'm getting off camera here, so I'm going to pull back over. Um, I left my, my job and um, I've been in the workforce, of course, my whole adult life. And um, now I'm self-employed um, as an artist um, and I am enjoying it. I um, have really been focused on creating content for you guys, um, continuing to make my journals and I have my uh, storefront here in the Virginia area that is in the painted tree. So all kinds of cool things. But what I was reflecting on this morning, let me get back to that. What I was reflecting on is how um, my life is very different and all in good ways, all in, in just beautiful ways. I couldn't have even imagined when I made this decision. I don't know if any of you have been kind of in that place in your life where you're like, I know I need to follow my heart um, and do things um, that make me happy. And sometimes we, we don't always have, you know, the luxury um, because of needing income, right? You have to work to live. Um, and I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity to pursue um, pursue this at this stage in my life. I have a very supportive family, my husband in particular. And um, I, I was just thinking about how just a few short months ago... Um, I would dread Monday morning knowing I had a whole week ahead of me. And, and the thing is, is I loved the work that I did. I felt it added value. Um, I always worked in the disability field, empowering individuals with disabilities, with employment, and I still believe in that. And it's something I am passionate about, certainly. Oh, look, I'm adding some pumpkins. Um but I had gotten to the 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 point, the stage that um, I'll do some polka dots and some this side. Um, you know that I had done that, and I was um, in administration and very very far from actually working with folks and um, being a part of their lives anymore. It was um, supervising a lot of great people. I had a great team, but anyway, it was time. It was time for me to say I'm brave enough and I'm going to, um, I'm gonna do what I have wanted to do um, for so many years in my life, which is be an artist and a business owner and all of those things. And who knows, maybe someday I'm gonna be able to blend the, those loves, right? <laughs> 
Um, and one way I've been thinking about that is I am, I'm actually having an in-person workshop this week here in the Richmond area. Um, we're going to make um, zines together and I'm really excited about that. But, um, you know, I started thinking, well, maybe there's a way to incorporate my love for um, working with individuals who experience disability in their lives and, and art, right? And I know there's lots of organizations out there that already have missions um, that, that help with that. But I, that's something that's been on my mind. So I've been giving that some thought and I've had a few um, of my viewers here on YouTube recently um, just share with me um, some of things that I think would make their learning easier because of disability um, and how sometimes it's difficult to follow some of the tutorials and things like that. So I'm also giving that some thought um, about how I might be able to make my content um, a little more accessible or user friendly, that kind of thing. So anyway, I'm, I've got so many things on my mind that I just thought I would share with you guys. Um, and I don't know if any of that resonates with you or not, but my life is very different just in a few short months. And I'm so grateful and having such a fun time, um, with you guys. Oh, look, I've got some dictionary paper. Let's use some of that. Um, so anyway, Leave me a comment if any of that speaks to you or if it's something you think um, our community, you know, may need or be interested in. I, um, this paper's super fragile. Um, and again, I'm not quite sure how to do that. It, it, you know, it may be providing more instructions that are written that you could like download or read along with watching and the verbal. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it looks like. Um, and I know some of my favorite, oops, that's upside down. Not that it matters, but some of my favorite um, teachers and creators on the YouTube platform and others do that. You know, they they have a sheet all prepared and um, to show that if you want to screenshot it or if you want to download it, you can. So let me know. It, it, it adds a whole nother layer of complexity to, to the projects for, for, for the creator um, to, to do that. So I'm not sure it's something that I'd be able to commit to for every, you know, every piece that I make. But I'm just thinking, I'm just trying to think of how to reach um, people and make people feel included. Um, so that's what's been on my mind lately. And I told you guys not to perseverate on your pieces of paper to just glue down what your hand touches. And here I am looking at every little tiny piece. Um, but I'm gonna do better. Here we go. I'm just gonna continue gluing because we're almost through it. And I laughed earlier. I said, oh, that's upside down. I realized I've got plenty of things that are upside down and also the right way. So we'll see what happens. And if I'm a little bit off camera, I apologize. I had a feeling that, um, that I might be. Um, I been trying to zoom in. I did have somebody share with me that they needed me to zoom in a little bit more um, because it was hard to see. And um, I worked for the Department for the Blind for years here in Virginia. And I definitely don't want to have individuals have a difficult time seeing um, if they're trying to follow along and watch. But then I also realized like all I'm doing is putting glue on the backs of these pieces, but it might not be in frame. So please don't hate on me and leave leave ugly comments. Um, I I never quite understood that on social media either, where people feel um, it, it just very comfortable leaving a lot of negative, a lot of negativity, um, especially when it has to do like with arts and crafts. Um, I don't know. It completely shocks me, but I've only had to remove, remove a few comments here and there. It hasn't been too bad, but I've heard other people talk about it. And, and I've had a few that have hurt my feelings. Um, and you just have to kind of toughen up, I guess, and decide you're not going to let it bother you. Um, but I kind of do subscribe to the, let's just be nice. Can't we just be nice to each other? Um, I don't know. I, again, life is too short to spend your time, hello little doggy, um, upset and frustrated 
um, and being mean to each other. Especially, again, something like this, where as creators, we want to share things that we enjoy and we really like and help people um, hopefully love our... Oh, I don't want to cover that birdie up that much. Love, love our work, right? And be able to make things, similar things that we like. Um, and I never quite understood that. Um, when, when people are so critical and say, say ugly things. I don't know why people do that. Okay. I am almost done. And that's enough rambling from Pam today. Uh, I hope you guys, whenever you're watching this, are having a great day and that there are not mean, ugly people bringing you down because we are crafting. Hopefully you are in your craft room or you're sitting comfy somewhere on your sofa and coming up with ideas for your next project and life's good, right? That's what I'm hoping for you guys. All right, this, it may be hard to see, but it has little polka dots on it and I kind of like it. One thing I have learned when I'm collaging and I know in advance that I'm going to use this as a journal cover, I, I try, I don't always succeed, to remember to use some of my scraps that are the um, like scrapbook card stock weight, like this one. Look, I'm going to put those great bright polka dots on here. If I don't like it later, I can cover them up, right? But it'll give us a splash of color. Um, on the corners, if, if you put the heavier paper, make sure each corner has some of the heavier paper layered on there, um, on the edges and the corners especially, it gives your cover a nice texture. Okay, isn't that great? I love it. And I already see little pieces later. I'll have to come through either with my glue stick or probably my wet white glue and just get all those down really good. A lot of people will use Maj Paj or other um, adhesive medium like that to collage with, and that's a great choice too. Um, you can even go all the way over it and give it that, that fun texture. Sometimes then it is sticky, so you'd have to think about how you're going to use use it. But I, I love Maj Paj. And you can really make the paper all, like, it's like it's all not individual little pieces. It becomes its own texture, and it's fabulous. Okay, I have glue all over my fingers, and it's sticking together. Now, this just gives you the idea, again, I hope, of what this is going to be, which is a journal cover. And eventually it's going to have a bunch of big pocket pages that I can keep my dolls in. I may also mount some of them with um, the Velcro dots so that they're removable and that they stay, but then you can play with them. But that's what this is going to be. More, more to come. There'll be another video um, as we work on this journal um, and put it together. So I'm going to set that aside. And now we're going to go back to this sheet. Let me get rid of this sticky paper. Um, so now, this is where I was showing you, You don't, don't worry about the edges because you can, I was just doing that while I was yapping, you can just trim them off or when you lay it on the trimmer to cut it, you can do that too, right? So we're going to make some of these strips and we can make them, um, I can cut this, um, in a couple, like two big strips, we could do some this way that are not quite as tall. So depending on your piece of paper really will depend on um, how, how many strips you get and what size they are. These I did on a piece of paper very similar to this and I just cut it in half that way. And we did some large ones. And then these were on a piece of paper that obviously was a little bit taller but then I cut it across this way let's see if this trimmer is sturdy enough to cut this for me I'm going to do these at two and a half inches wide let's see if it can go through that Ugh. when it hit that scrap of paper I had quite a few layers right there it got hit a little bit of a problem all right there's one and then I'll do another at two and a half and then I think I'm going to turn it this way and do another at two and a half. So we're going to get three out of this one. And we're going to get this strip. And I use these. In fact, I had that here. 
this piece right here that I decorated with was the leftover strip when I cut one of these up. So again, if you have a piece off to the side, don't worry about it because you can use it. All right, I probably am not going to use the paper scraps too much. I might use them a little bit, but I am going to pull out my doodad box that I have a bunch of pieces um, from kits and things that I've been working on that then just end up in here for me to play with. And I consider this sitting on my desk, right? <laughs> Um, it's in a little box, but we'll, we'll find some things. Now, you don't necessarily have to have like a main image, um, but you can. Um, I, I did that here. Um, I think this was from one of Sylvia's kits with Las Mimas Amores, um, that little girl. This is from one of my paper kits, that flower and this owl kind of ended up as focal points. This is a little tag and... Um, another piece, I believe, from one of Sylvia's kits. So I'd been working on some projects for her. This one doesn't really have a total focal point. You know, it could later, um, or you can leave it. I could put a quote. And this one has that circle. So, you know, you, you can make a focal point. You don't have to. You might already have something on the paper that you want to, um, you know, keep in mind um, to, to look at. So it really is up to you. You can leave these. <laughs> like I said, you can just have these on hand and then when you're ready to work um, or make some pieces for a journal, you can then work to coordinate um, your papers at that time. Um, there's no rules, no rules. But what I love, like I said, is you can get completely unique, like one of a kind pieces um, out of this type of master board collaging. No one is going to have one that looks exactly like yours. Um, it's just not possible doing it with this, this method. Um, okay. Oh, that's a butterfly right there. Um, so we'll stick it down somewhere. And I usually, I don't always, but I, I like to add, um, little pieces of ribbon or lace or things like that too so we may do that as well and a lot of times before I start gluing all the pieces down I just sort of look at it and I see you know is that looking the way I want it to do I need some more contrast this has already been inked we'll put that there you know it just really it depends on if I'm you know right I'm working on three right now and I tend to um Sometimes I'll just do one at a time, but I like to kind of lay out a few. And then as I'm going through all my little pieces, I will um, decide which ones I'm going to use. And, and they get moved around. Sometimes I think I'm going to use it. And then I lay it down and I don't like it, so I don't. These are some faux stamps that are kind of in a fall theme. Um... I'm thinking about making a, some collage master boards that definitely scream fall, right? And then decorate it with some of my pumpkins from my Feeling Like Fall kit. So I might even just tear up a bunch of those papers and make some collages and then add, add the words and all of that to it. So let's cut up a word. Let's take, um, how about a live feeling alive today. Um, the pace of my mornings are very different now too, that, that um, I still get up early. I'm an early bird and I'm definitely a morning person, but I have thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity first time in my adult life to um, have my coffee with my puppy dogs in the morning before before I do anything so um, I'm usually up and showered and then downstairs with them um, enjoying a lovely cup of coffee um, and I, I tend to that's when I tend to do some of my social media respond to comments do that kind of stuff but again very different than being up and out and at the office by 6 30 um, to work 10 plus hour days <laughs> away from the house um, it's a very very different pace and again, 
very grateful for you guys helping make that happen by watching my videos and encouraging me. It makes a big difference. Okay, I don't want to cover up everything on that butterfly. Hmm. I don't know if that's going to work. Um, and sometimes this happens when I start decorating. I'm like, oh, what do I want to do here? And and I have a hard time um, deciding if I don't have something specific in mind that I'm going to use it for. But again, if I usually just kind of keep going and stick with it, it all works out. And they're all just so super fun and unique. Um, there are times like this set here, I used a lot of the same scraps. Um, you can tell because they all, even though they're different, they, they coordinate. And so a lot of times I will try to do that. I'll try to do two or three master board pages. I will chop them up, decorate them, and then I have a nice set that coordinates. All right. Um, the other thing that I do with these, and if you guys, again, have been around with me for a little while you've probably seen I'd make a lot of the three by three um, cards that can be used you know as a little greeting card I guess um, but then also um, as a journaling card to tuck inside pockets those types of things and um, I will cut collage master boards into like two and three quarter inch squares and then layer it on a three by three inch card something like that and um sometimes I add quotes stickers all kinds of stuff and I love doing that too so again you you don't have to leave them in strips you can cut them up into squares um you can make bookmarks I don't know I know there's like a bunch of things that I'm not thinking of right this second that you can certainly use these for Let's see. Put that there. Um, oh, gosh. Let me see. Let me see if I have, I thought, here, maybe her. Another little girl. Um, and it kind of goes with the squares I have going on here, so I'm going to stick her down there to make a little bit of a focal point. And now I'm going to pull out some of my, my my bag here. And sometimes it changes a lot and then sometimes I feel like I pull it out and I've got the same things that I've been using um, over and over and over again. So we'll see. There's a bow I've already tied. It's a little bit thick. That's pretty, really thick. I think that's why it keeps getting shoved back in there. Um, all right, let's see if we can do something with these. So sometimes I just staple them right on, and then sometimes I like to um, punch a hole and loop it through. It just depends on my mood. This one I'm gonna staple because this is such a tiny piece left over. Let's see if I can get my stapler. And I didn't do a great job. It kind of... Um, went wonky on me. So one thing you can do if that happens, of course you can pull the staple out if you want to. I'm going to grab a glue dot and I am going to kind of m manipulate this ribbon to lay where I want it to using the glue dot. There. I like that better. All right. So then this one, let's, it's a little bit longer. So let's use, this is one of my favorite tools. I've been using it a lot lately. Let's do um, a little side ribbon here that we just tie on with that little slot. And again, if you're interested in any of the tools, um, if you go to my Amazon storefront that's linked in the description, there's all kinds of supplies and things that I use and like. Okay, there's that. And then I've got this pink one. Now, sometimes when they're this, um, this is like a chiffon, and it's really um, flimsy. Sometimes I'll fold it around like that. Sometimes I just cut it in half. I think I'm going to I'm gonna do that. I'm going to cut it in half so it's a little bit thinner and then decide what I'm going to do next. Let's see. 
and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, which is a good thing because I certainly am not able to chomp it perfectly straight. I think I'm going to do it this way because I think it will lay better than if I staple it. It's so, um, what is the word? <laughs> Loose, loosey goosey. It doesn't hold its shape. Okay. But doesn't it look cute? It just adds that little bit of extra. All right, I have made a mess. This is a project when you are crafting that um, you got to be okay with all the scraps and all the little bits and pieces everywhere. All right, I hope you liked it. If you, um, like I said, if you're returning and you um, are a subscriber, thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing so and come back and enjoy lots of other projects that we've been making together. Um, and if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment and let me know. Okay. Have fun, everybody. Thank you. Oh, and here's our journal cover. There's our journal cover with our cat and dog. All right. Y'all have a great day. Thanks.